What is poppin' guys? You got your coach of the Chim Chargers here for week 11 of the GBA. This time we are up against Dan, also known as A-Drive, coach of the New York Metapods and a good friend of mine. And uh, he's a very solid player. As you probably know, we have faced week 2 and he has won the last uh, GBA before. So it's, it's going to be a fun match, uh, definitely a cool rematch that we're going to have here. He actually was nice enough to give me the replay from his side since um, we had some disconnection issue and... Uh, could not save the replay so this is actually the Wi-Fi battle but from his side of the view and uh, it was like a 59 minute uh, 59 minute uh, battle as you probably well know I had to uh, crop it down and uh, it was uh, it ended up being pretty well but you might see a little bit of uh, choppiness in the in the replay but uh, it will not deter my explanations of the game so with that being said you know you see the team preview right in front of you he brings a team of Mega Altaria, Rotom, Blastoise, Skuntank, Gorgeist and Victini so pretty cool team for sure. I can expect him to more uh, more than likely lead with either the Rotom or the Victini. So my lead here was obviously going to be the Mega Altar, uh, not the Mega Altar, the Mega Ampharos because I want to try to get off my Mega Evolution as soon as possible. I want to be able to actually have this thing in order to switch into Victini's uh, V crates and stuff like that, or his blue flares, depending on what his set is. So my game plan going into this game was to try to get off a lot of early momentum, try to pressure him and uh, you know just try to wear down his Pokemon over time so let's just go ahead and see what went down in this game here so let's go ahead and uh, begin the battle and as you can see the battle has begun I am issuing that challenge not to myself of course but to uh, a drive so I'm gonna be leading off here with the Mega Ampharos he leads off with his Victini so kinda what I expected here pretty uh, solid lead on my part so I could just go ahead and Mega Evolve here just go ahead and go right for the Volt Switch on this thing there's no reason not to since uh, there's more there's a pretty high chance that he's going to go for the U-turn here and try to switch out on his own. So as you can see, he goes right for the U-turn. He does not have any Volt Switch immunities, which is good because that just means I can relentlessly spam Volt Switch and U-turn against his team. And as you can see, he went for the U-turn right there into his Mega Altaria. And I can just go ahead and go for the nice slow Volt Switch here into my Jirachi. Jirachi is such a great Pokemon versus the Altaria. And... um because Drachi can actually pressure him since, uh, of course, he will be forced to Mega Evolve if he decides to stay in. So he switches out here, goes into his Gorgeist. Oh, not his Gorgeist. I, nicknames are messing me up. But he goes into his Rotom here, which uh, <laughs> I do get a crit on the U-turn. does not matter. I kind of knew he was going to switch, so U-turn was my best play. So I can go right back into my Mega Ampharos here because, uh, you know, I can just go ahead and uh, lock him into this nice little Volturn core going on. And uh, he is going to be sort of... In a position where he has to be forced to stay in in order to break the chain. He goes for the Wisp here. It does miss, which does not really matter too much because I am, of course, a Rest Fabio set. And I do have Heal Bell on my Togekiss, so the status does not really matter too much. I now Volt Switch here, go into my Haxorus. I can pressure him out. I know that his switch in to the Haxorus is going to be my his Gorgeist. So I have a feeling that he's not even going to Volt Switch here because he doesn't want to get Earthquaked. He's more than likely going to Hard Switch out into his Gorgeist here. So I actually make a double into my uh, Fabio here on the Gorgeist as uh, I'm pretty sure I can use this as an opportunity to just go for the HP fire because I do have HP fire on this thing in order for me to actually be able to hit this thing with super effective damage so he brings out his Gorgeist here on the Haxorus which now you know I doubled out so I brought in Fabio and as you can see here he he actually goes for the Leech Seed here which is uh, not too bad I guess since as you can see this Hidden Power Fire does a, a little bit like near half and um you know, he's able to actually recover that with leftovers plus leech seeds. So uh, on this next turn here, I'm actually going to want to switch out because, you know, I don't want to stay in. I don't want to have him just suck up more health and, you know, get back to, I guess, near full. So I go ahead here, go right for the Volt Switch. As you know, he is faster since um, Mega Ampharos is a very slow Pokemon. It has some really nice slow Volt Switches. So I go for the Volt Switch here and I go right into my, I believe I go into my Togekiss here because Togekiss is actually a Pokemon that can really, like, just completely wall this thing as I bring it out, I, br I bring it out right now, and as you can see, he is more than likely going to switch out here, so I'm actually going to predict his switch, and he does decide to actually go right now into, I believe, his Rotom, because uh, Rotom, of course, you know, is able to sort of deal with this really well, resist the air slash and stuff, but I predict that, go for the Nasty Plot here, and uh, I mean, there's not really much this Rotom can do, I mean, Volt Switch does like, 40 something percent so that's not too bad not too bad at all i can actually roost on that pretty easily but i'm gonna go here for the air slash i mean i am nasty plotted i have plotted up so this air slash will be a two hit ko i have to get a flinch which i am able to get i mean it is 60 percent all the flinches are actually in my favor so it's pretty much hacks if i don't get a flinch 
but um, you know, the, the rolls are in my favor, of course, in terms of percentages. So I'm just gonna go for the air slash here, be able to knock it out. It is a two hit KO, so I can go ahead and just, you know, get rid of this Rotom once and for all. Very useful, uh, for sure, as now he's gonna be able to bring out his Victini. I know that for a fact, the way he brought this out, this has to be probably banded because uh, there, was a, there was no other way that, um, you know, he, he bring this out. It wouldn't have been able to Oko otherwise. So he brings out uh, Victini here. I just had to switch out into my Don Fan. I have a Custat Berry. I kind of want to gauge how much damage this V Create does. And as you can see, it brings me down super low. So that means that he is definitely, or more than likely, at least Choice Bandit. So I know I have a Custat Berry here. He probably knows that I have a Custat Berry. So I just go ahead and activate it. And I go ahead here and set up my Stealth Rocks. I figured that Stealth Rocks would be pretty useful as he just hard switches into Blastoise. I was kind of expecting maybe Altaria to come out, but I guess Blastoise is also pretty safe as well. As uh, as you can see here, I just get up my rocks, and I just want to go ahead here and make a nice little play and just sort of, you know, I guess I guess sort of tell him that, you know, I know you're going for Rapid Spin here, so I'm just going to get up my rocks again. But, I mean, there's no point in me just going for this because Rapid Spin will otherwise, you know, just kill me if he keeps going for it, and rocks will not be on my side. So I just wanted to, you know, just get up rocks again and see what he wants to do. And uh, just go ahead here and switch out into my Fabio. I mean, it's pretty safe versus Blastoise. Blastoise can't really do much to uh, to Mega Ampharos other unless he has like Ice Beam or something. Which, uh, as you can see here, I mean, he just goes for the Rapid Spin just to get rid of the rocks. And uh, right now, I'm just gonna go for the Volt Switch. He goes for the Scald here, so that's not too bad because it does like literally like two percent or something. So I go for the Volt Switch here, and I do get a crit on the Blastoise, and I'm able to knock it out, which actually does not really matter too much because what is Blastoise doing to Ampharos anyways? He just literally, he, he was pretty much just sacking it there. If he, if he decided to go for Scald on my Ampharos and take the Volt Switch, there's, the crit really didn't matter because I would have been able to kill it anyways like on the next turn. And there was nothing he could do when he saved it or, or anything like that. So he's going to go Victini here as I bring in Togekiss. And uh, me forcing the, Victi uh, the Victini out here means that I can actually just go ahead and sack my Donphan uh, to this Victini. And as you can see, he goes right for the U-turn. Which is not a bad play, I guess. I mean, I'm still able to live with my Donphan. And I was just actually trying to sack my Donphan off here because I did not need it anymore. The rest of his team is pretty much faster. So he goes to Skuntank here. I kind of know that he's going to go for Pursuit. So I just decided to stay in and see what he wants to do. Maybe he'll choke and sucker. But he just Pursuits here. So uh, I don't really have to switch out so that it, w it wouldn't really make a top play, you know. <laughs> just by switching up my 1% uh, Donphan to a Pursuit. But I bring in Keldeo here. And uh, now what I can do is just go for the Hidden Power Ice. I actually expected him, because he has two Pokemon. He has Altaria and Gorgeist, but he just decides to stay in here and go for the Poison Jab, which is pretty fine. And uh, I don't get Poison, which is nice. And I can just go ahead here and click Surf, but he decides to switch, uh, to switch out now. So I guess I guess you could say that's a pretty, uh, pretty solid play. I don't know if he was uh, intending that, but I guess after he saw the HP Ice, then uh, he decided that uh, he probably knew I was going to Surf there. So, I mean, it was... Pretty good judgment on his part, but now I know for a fact this HP Ice is definitely going to kill from this range just by how much that Surf did. So he's going to Mega Evolve here, and I can just go ahead and uh, click HP Ice on this Mega Altaria here. And, uh, you know, this is definitely going to do a lot of damage, but he actually ends up living. And I'm like, wait a second, huh? Because <laughs> the Calc said uh, it would not live at all, and uh, not that, uh, that kind of led me to believe he was a very, very bulky Spadef set, so... Then I decided, you know what, okay, that's kind of bad because I needed to kill this thing. It, it might have been a roll, you never know, but, um, you know. I decided to switch out here to save my Keldeo because this thing is pretty useful still. I decided to go into my Jirachi here as he goes for the Roost once again. So because he's such a bulky Spadef set, I kind of just expected him to be some sort of, um, some sort of support Altaria, I guess you could say. And I guess there's further sort of proof that kind of suggested it was that but anyways he decides to switch out here of my Jirachi into his Gorgeist as I decide to go for the Iron Head here not trying to play around or anything like that and I think I probably should have just stayed in and you know took my chances with the Iron Head flinches but I decided that I would make the save play and switch out here I did not want to risk my Jirachi getting a burn because that would be pretty bad uh, for sure or you know getting foul played um, because Jirachi is of course my win condition for uh for destroying his team because of the fact that iron head is just such a great move you know on rachi so i'm gonna go here into my uh, ampharos on this uh gorgeist here as he's gonna be able to leech seed me get back some health and i, pr I probably should not have uh, let him get back this much health but i mean it it's like in the long run i mean i'm making all the right plays in order for me to assure that i win the game in the end um with what i know so far so he's gonna go for the synthesis here as i go for the rest trying to get back my health and you know like I said in the team building video if you have not seen that you might want to check it out but I do have a uh, heal bell on my togekiss which means that getting off this um, getting off this rest here and being able to actually just heal bell off 
it's just going to be so nice overall. And um, he's going to be able to go right now into his Altaria as I actually expect that kind of and go into my into my Togekiss here. Um, no, no, yeah, into my Togekiss here. And I kind of wanted to gauge how much damage this uh, Air Sash was going to do in order to really kind of find out what sort of set he was. But I, I decided first I'm going to go for the Heal Bell. You know, that's my priority to wake up my Altaria as he goes right for the Body Slam. And he's able to uh, knock me down pretty low there. And now... Like, that kind of makes me believe he's more of a utility set than anything, because you see Body Slam, you see a Spadef set, and this Air Slash that I'm about to do, like, bounces off of it, so... Uh, that kind of makes me believe he's more, like, support, maybe, rather than uh, any kind of offensive set. He is able to para me, though, which is a little bit unfortunate. And, um, at, right now, you know, I decide that I'm gonna go into my Jirachi on this thing, because, um, there's no way he's gonna get two Paralysis in a row. So I just go into my Jirachi here, as, uh, you can see, he decides to go right for the Body Slam once again. And that actually does, um, you know, a little bit of damage right there. So, really, right now, I'm just thinking, okay, this is support Altaria, probably, with Heal Bell and stuff like that. So, I'm not really too worried. He goes into his uh, his Gorgeist here as I go right for the T-Wave. Just trying to paralyze. Maybe if he, does, if he decided to bring out Victini and made an aggressive play, I could have paralyzed that. But I'm able to just go ahead and paralyze the Gorgeist here, which is not too bad at all. As what I can do now is just go ahead and switch out. I mean, I am Choice Scarfed, so I'm locked into this thing. Got to switch out 100% here, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch out into my into my into my Togekiss, of course, because Togekiss here is able to deal with this pretty well. Because we're both paralyzed, I am actually now faster than the Gorgeist, so because of that, I figured that going into this thing would allow me to roost up or heal bell and stuff like that, just get back to a safer amount of um, you know, just just pretty much assure my safety right here. So I'm gonna go here and actually just uh, yeah, well he's gonna switch out here hard into his Victini. And Victini actually, you know, is a very powerful threat to my team because of the choice ban, but it's not too bad at all because I can just go ahead and heal bell here and uh, I am cured of my paralysis, which is very nice. And now what I can do is just, um, well, after Leech Seed, of course, I only have one safe switch in. I guess Haxorus is kind of a switch in as well, since I'm pretty sure I can take one V create, but I decided to go here into my Mega Ampharos here, my boy Fabio. And as you can see, he decides to go right for the V create here. And look how much damage this thing does. This is Choice Bandit. I'm EV'd enough to uh, live, um, to not get 2 it KO'd by, uh, by a Choice Bandit V create from full. So I'm able to just go ahead here and click Volt Switch as he's going to actually just go ahead and go right for the V create once again. And uh, putting me down really low. However, you know, I'm able to actually now just go ahead and Volt Switch out of this Victini. And, uh, you know, because of the, the because of the, uh, the Spadef drops, it's actually going to put it down pretty low. To the point where Iron Head from Scarf Jirachi actually puts in so much work. So I'm just going to go into my Rachi right now. I mean, U-Turn still kills anyway, so I'm just going to go right for the U-Turn here. Expecting him to want to go out into his Gorgeist once again. So I can just go ahead and click U-Turn here. And that actually puts me in a position where I can bring back my Togekiss. Or I, I can bring back my uh, I, I can bring back my Fabio because Fabio here can actually get off the rest. I am faster than it now because of the fact that Gorgeist is paralyzed, which is really like so useful. That like that Jirachi set specifically is there to help support the team as well as you know just providing as a late backup a sort of cleaner, I guess you could say. So I'm gonna go for the rest here on this uh, on this Gorgeist here as I can go back to my full health. And uh, right now, he's going to actually just go ahead and click uh, Leech Seed, I believe, or maybe some mo uh, some other move here. But he actually ends up getting uh, he actually ends up getting paralyzed, I think. So, unfortunately, but, you know, there's nothing that it would have done to my Fabio anyways. So, I'm going to go ahead and switch out here into my Togekiss. And uh, as you can see, he decides to switch out here into his Altaria. And now, I'm like, okay, this is a support set, right? I can just go ahead and repeatedly click Roost until he paralyzes me, and then optimize my heal bell by healing myself of paralysis, as well as healing my Ampharos of uh, sleep. So I go ahead and just click Roost here. I'm trying to optimize my heal bell because I'm pretty sure this thing, you know, is a support set with body, like, like, body slam, Roost, that's all I've seen so far, but I've seen it, like, really spadef, so... I have a feeling that this thing is like maybe Heal Bell or something because I, I know that Adriad likes to bring Heal Bell Altaria to support his team. So 
So I'm just going to go for the Roost here, getting back to health, and then he reveals Dragon Dance. I'm like, ooh, okay. So my chances of winning have dropped down to 60% because Jirachi's flinch will assure me the win on this thing for sure. And I mean, you know Jirachi, right? It, it, it's a 60% chance to flinch with Iron Head. So I'm not too worried about that right now because, uh, you know, the odds are, of course, in my favor. Like I said, you know, it is hacks not to flinch with Jirachi. So uh, he's going to go for the Body Slam here. I mean, it is a 30% chance to para me, I think. So... He's not going to be able to get the para, which is nice. And now I can just go ahead here, go for the Iron Head. Chances are in my favor. Ah, no flinch. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much game right there. So, unfortunately, uh, Pokeyam not coming through. Curse me in Subhub. So, uh, unfortunately, I got to take the L right now. So, Alt F4, pretty much. So, yeah. And then uh, I had to go into my Keldy here to see if I'm faster. And I don't think I EV this thing to be faster than whatever spread he has on his Altaria. So, Unfortunately, we are going to take the L right here, and uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, there's nothing I could have expected. Of, I, I, I couldn't have expected DD uh, Spadef Body Slam Altaria. It's pretty uh, interesting right there, but I mean, I got really unfortunate with the Jirachi for sure. I mean, it, it was a 60% chance to actually win this game. I had a 60%. Uh, yeah, I had a 60% chance to win this game, and I wasn't sure if I got a low roll on the Keldeo or not with the uh, Life Orb HP Ice, but um, if I did, then yeah, that definitely definitely came into account. But I mean, it was it was still a fun game overall, and I'm still in the playoffs no matter what. So uh, never fear, my friends, never fear. And uh, I just go for like the Nasty Plot here, trying to um, you know put this thing down even lower, but unfortunately, this thing is uh, gonna run through my team, running through the six, you know? <laughs> yeah, but definitely like solid prep by uh, A-Drive bringing this set here. I never really expected, um, uh, body slam, spadef, d dance, very nice, very nice. I really thought it was gonna be like a heal bell support set, but you know, all good, all good, man. And uh, yeah, Haxorus is my last. He's just gonna go ahead and body slam that. So that is gonna be a good game. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I mean, that's my. La I'll, I'll be honest, right? I'll be honest. This was my wedding gift to A Drive. You know, congratulations, my friend, on your wedding. <sighs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um. No, we're we're uh, we're what eight and three right now, so still doing all right, and uh, we're still guaranteeing the playoffs. So, like I said, I mean these last two matches they don't really matter too much. I'm still going to try to win the last one so that I could at least be um, you know just keep being on the top of the uh, the division, you know. So that's pretty much that. So hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, you know it was a pretty fun match for sure. He's just gonna body slam here, and uh, I mean I, I'm I'm asleep, so I can't really do anything about it, but um. The reason that I did not T-Wave the Altaria instead of, you know, Iron Heading it like I did was because of the fact that he still had a Skun Tank left and I, Iron Head was just my best play overall to assure my win. And it was, it was like I said, you know, in my favor to actually win this game. But unfortunately, sometimes, you know, you can't always um, get fortunate in Pokemon. But it's just the game we play, you know, it's the game we play. But yeah, definitely a solid game. Go check out uh, Aegis, uh Battle for the uh, unabridged version of this, uh, <laughs> of this replay, the exact same replay. But uh, I'm sure his commentary will be insightful, and uh, I mean like none of the none of the hacks actually matter in the beginning. Like the crit on Blaster didn't matter because what is Skull gonna do to an Ampharos anyways? And um, the the Wisp miss on uh, on Fabio didn't matter early on in the game anyways because I have rest and I have uh, heal bell and stuff like that. So I feel like like the only kind of uh, unluck that I got was uh, just the flinch misses, uh, n just not getting the flinch because that itself like like the chances are in my favor for that. But um, you know. It's not a big deal. It is what it is, right? So it's I uh, just got to play the game how it is. So hope you all enjoyed and uh, looking forward to uh, hearing from you all. You know, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I mean, I, I it was still a it was still a solid game uh, for sure. I didn't really make any sort of misplays other than letting Gorgas heal up. But like with my game plan in the end, I would have a lot of Pokemon to deal with that anyways in the end. So um, I don't think I played it badly at all. I think. Uh, you know, I just did not expect the Dragon Dance set. And I mean, even though he did Dragon Dance, like, I had a Scarf Jirachi for it. And it was just a 60% chance to win. But uh, unfortunately, you know, odds are not always in our favor. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. And, uh, yeah, later, guys. Peace. Jim Chargers out.